details specifically how action potentials occur. An action potential is a depolarization and repolarization event. We've briefly highlighted or mentioned action potentials in previous videos. This video, we're going to focus really on nerve cells, otherwise known as neurons. This same application also applies to muscle cells. But to be clear, those are not the only excitable cells in the body. We have cells of glandular tissues, which, which become excitable, macrophages, ciliated cells, among other cells within the body. But to be clear, this lecture is really focusing on nerve cells, and it certainly applies to muscle cells as well. So when I say excited, I'm suggesting a cell that is deviating from its resting state, which is anywhere from negative 70 to negative 90 millivolts. So let's just uh, lay out a graph here. And to be clear, this graph on the x-axis is demonstrating time or reflecting time. On the y-axis, it's the charge or voltage of the cell. Keep in mind the voltage is the difference in charge between inside the cell and outside the cell. And at rest, most cells are gonna be around negative 70 to negative 90 millivolts. That is gonna vary based on the cell and also to a certain degree, based on what literature you are reading. I'm not really concerned if it's negative 70 or negative 90 millivolts, but we just have to have a baseline. So the baseline resting state for cells in this video is going to be negative 70 millivolts. And when a cell is at negative 70 millivolts and not changing, that's what's known as the resting state and the resting membrane potential. That is to say, the voltage or potential across the membrane between the positive region on the exterior of the cell and the negative region on the interior of the cell is what's known as the resting membrane potential. And in this case, we're suggesting it's negative 70 millivolts. When a cell becomes excited, it's deviating from that resting state. So I will argue if a cell hyperpolarizes, which we're not going to focus on in this video, but when a cell hyperpolarizes, it is deviating from its resting state and it is actually becoming excited. But generally speaking, when we talk about an excited cell, it's becoming less negative or up to the tra trajectory of being positive. So this is what we're referring to as a depolarization event that more often than not is due to the influx of the sodium ion. Influx is suggesting movement into the cell. Sodium has a high concentration outside of the cell and its positive charge is also attracted to the negative interior of the resting cell at negative 70. So it has the electrochemical gradient and it will passively move into the cell down its gradients that is known as sodium efflux and it what it is what causes the depolarization of cells now to be clear when cells depolarize they don't all reach positive 30 millivolts when we look at neurons which are nerve cells when we look at neurons of the central nervous system when they depolarize they're hovering just above 0 millivolts so they're really not getting too much into the positive range. In this case, what we're looking at is what's known as an overshoot. It's going well above zero millivolts, all the way up to positive 30 millivolts. And it's going to end or stop at positive 30 millivolts because the sodium gates have closed. So I think one thing I was remiss to mention is oftentimes this is due to, or let me rephrase, this is always due to gated channels. We're not dealing in this presentation with leakage channels. This specifically has to do with gated channels, ligand gated channels or voltage gated channels. But for our purposes right now, let's just focus on voltage gated channels. The voltage gated channel is going to open and it's eventually going to close. Now, so the sodium gated channels have two gates, an activation gate and an inactivation gate. And I'm going to highlight those in a subsequent image. But the take-home message here is the reason it doesn't make it past positive 30 is because sodium can no longer enter cells 
because the gate or gates have closed. So depolarization is just one half of an action potential. The other half is the repolarization event. The repolarization is bringing that cell back to its resting state, in this case, negative 70 millivolts. And that is almost always, if not always, due to the efflux of potassium out of cells, the movement of potassium out of cells, potassium moving down its chemical gradient out of cells. Certainly, if we think about chloride, chloride has a higher concentration out of cells. The influx of chloride could certainly cause a repolarization event. That is to say, it could make that cell more negative, bringing it back down to negative 70. But it's almost always, if not always, the potassium efflux. And I should back up and say, and I believe I did say, that depolarizations are almost always sodium influx. Theoretically, they could be the influx of calcium. And what we saw in the pancreatic beta cells is the depolarization was sodium influx, but also contributing to that was the prevention of potassium efflux. So retaining potassium into the cell also played a part in depolarization of that cell. So for our purposes, let's think an action potential is a depolarization, repolarization event. Certainly that's what it is. But depolarization due to sodium influx and repolarization due to potassium efflux. Okay, I mentioned the sodium channels. Keep in mind the sodium channel is a protein channel that allows sodium to move in down its electrochemical gradient into the cell. And sodium has, the sodium channels have two types of gates. An activation gate that we see right here and an inactivation gate that we see right here. The activation gate is on the outside of this channel facing the extracellular fluid, and the inactivation gate is facing the intracellular fluid. So in this conformation, sodium cannot get into the cell because that activation gate is closed. So something is going to need to happen to open up that gate. And that what needs to happen is a conformational change that is caused by a change in voltage. Now, to be clear, Ligands can activate gates, cause the conformational change that opens up gates. But in this case, we're dealing with a voltage-gated channel. So the change in voltage is going to open up that gate, allowing sodium to move into the cell. Once that gate opens, nothing has to be done to sodium to incentivize it to move into the cell because it's going to rapidly move into the cell down its electrochemical gradient. Now keep in mind, I gave you a scenario a few videos back about how little sodium needs to come in to actually excite a cell. And these gates stay open so briefly, but long enough to let in substantial amount of sodium, which once again is not very much, to depolarize the cell. And this, what happens next is the inactivation gate closes. After that activation gate opens, the inactivation closes within one ten thousandths of a second, which means sodium is given a very brief, narrow window to enter the cell. But once again, that's sufficient enough to get enough sodium in to depolarize the cell up to positive 30. If that inactivation gate had stayed open longer, the depolarization would have gone higher than positive 30, but it rarely, if ever, does. I'm not gonna say it never does because I'm not versed in every physiological process within the body, but to my knowledge, it never gets above positive 30 millivolts. And then those gates need to reset where we go back to what it looked in the beginning with the activation gate closed and the inactivation gate open. Those are the sodium voltage gated channels. The potassium voltage gated channels 
are typical gates. They don't have two gates. But the question remains, when do the potassium gates open? And a lot of people are going to suggest they open at positive 30 millivolts because that's when the cell starts repolarizing. I'm going to suggest the potassium gates, and I've always suggested this, are going to open almost the same time as the activation gate. But it opens much more slowly. And by, that, by the time the potassium gates are open, the inactivation gate that we see here for sodium is already closed. So sodium is not able to come in any longer. So action potential is a depolarization and repolarization.